you know, I'm doing these draw streams, but it feels really weird without any kind of a introduction. So let's just take a random clip. Better. Okay. Well, welcome to Monday, the draw stream, because I didn't have anything else going on today. I haven't been looking online a lot for news. Hey, Praetor7, welcome to the nest. What? He says. Um, I suppose I could have had a look at Twitter to see if there was anything interesting to talk about. Most of... Most of what I saw was, um, let's have a look here. There we go. Just stuff about the protests. There are the, uh, the act of protests. Not a whole lot of interesting there. Doesn't really apply to us. Um, Michael is saying, Joseph, just in time for some goose, juicy gossip. Oh my goodness. You have no idea how little I have. Um, <laughs> so we got to figure something out to draw here. Okay, good. Let's start. Heck, let's start down here. Um, yeah, yeah, I watched the, um, I missed the the chat show the other night, like being on it, and I sat and I watched that. Uh, they talked about Dale's poster campaign or the one Ethan's running for him, and um, they talked about. Um, Oh, a comic convention. So, you know, going to comic conventions, is that still relevant? And, and I, I you know, I suppose it, it's, it's okay that I missed that one because I haven't been to a comic convention in like 10 years. Right. And, and as far as the poster campaigns go, well, I mean, I, I really do hope that that helps Dale out. And I hope that, that, um, he gets paid from it, but I, you know, I've never been huge into uh, Citizen Ronan. Welcome to the nest. If I didn't say so already, hi. Uh, I've never been huge into like merchandise campaigns. Um, you know, I like, I, I back books. Um, I like to read. I like to look at the art, and I, I don't have a whole lot on my walls now. I think that's probably something that I should change. You know, they say usually when you're an artist, you want to kind of surround yourself with. Um, art that kind of speaks to you kind of um art that kind of uh inspires you a little bit you know maybe a couple of like quotes here and there to to really get you going but i don't have an incredible amount on my walls i suppose i have a, a little painting mrs stat did for me and i got a what is that justice league number 12 plaque uh king kong poster a godzilla poster yeah, that's about it i gotta get more up um, Bemis said I'd be buying a poster, but I'm not 15. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, I don't mind posters. I mean, I've got a few of them. I've got a, uh, I've got a collection of old, you know, posters, from movies that were coming to DVD, all kinds of them. I just don't really put them up. You know, I also went through like a, a phase where I bought a ton of postcards. I've got lots and lots of like postcards. Uh, concept art postcards and stuff. So what you do is, I mean, just the idea of is you buy a ton of like little frames, you know, your, your four by six or five by whatever they are, four by six frames. And you just, you can cover your walls with all this really cool art. Now, I've got a few frames, but I haven't quite gone in and, and hung them up. I feel like I should. I feel like as an artist, my room should have just my office here should have just art all over the place covering it. At the same time, I guess there's something to be said about distraction, right? Okay, we got us we got us a good start on this sketch right here. I'm gonna put that on a different layer there, and what we'll do is we'll right about there. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually pretty darn excited for some of the stuff I've been 
I've been seeing is and 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 the books that I've been that I've backed so far, you know, stuff like uh, T Bird and Throttle and the Ape Men. That's coming. I heard Lumina Vox. I tried that one out. That's finally getting done with the printers. Uh, Kelsey's book, you know, eventually will will happen. I'm excited about that. Um, what else? A she? Another she? Uh, omnibus? I'm I'm, I'm getting uh, all the Alterna stuff that's coming. Uh, so I've got I backed the King Cryptid, uh, and I um. I back to encrypted, and then I've got the winter one that's coming, and then the the spring, I think, uh, campaign is uh, going to happen too. So, so eventually, of course, it's going to happen. But I've got three uh, going from that. I'm excited to see uh, what's coming. I mean, oh, Ghost of Madacuma T, Core Draft. Uh, those are kind of add. What was it? Um, Wraith 2, got that coming. So, you know, I'm excited to see what comes to my mailbox first. Uh, Inglorious Rex 2, I believe. Um, I'm trying to think of some other, some other ones. I know there are, but... But, uh... Yes, yes, the Great for 7 is receiving Cerberus today. Oh, awesome. Awesome. He just launched, uh, I think he just launched a new one, too. That, what is it? Is it Earthbound 3 that I saw? Narwhal just launched? That's pretty cool. Uh, I've, I've noticed that that uh the personalities that be are they're kind of um streaming a little less and working a little little more earthbound grand prix that's the third one yep yep i, I last i saw i think he was at like um oh my gosh must be eight thousand six thousand something like that yeah, on fun my comments. I'll I'll look on there every once in a while. See how how things are going. And yeah, Narwhal, from what I understand, if I remember him right, if I remember it right, he said he's got like a bunch of trunk tr script chunk. I can't say it. Trunk scripts that he's uh, he's you know like fixing up to do. So. So that's that's good. Praetor Seven, uh, uh, Narwhal's machine says. Ronan says. Uh, Praetor Seven says Narwhal's back on a streak lately with putting stuff out. Yeah, there's been a lack of streams lately from people. Um, yeah, I I want to say. I mean, you know, there's still kind of like your, your staples like Jack or Comic Skate Kings or or whatever like that. But I mean, uh, I think people are fulfilling. I think, which is good. Or, or, you know, just working on their books. Um, nobody wants to be late, but. Which I prefer, I suppose, if, if, I, if I'm if I'm honest with myself, I I uh, I'm always happier to see the books. Um and uh, and I'd rather see a stream, I think, from from like the more professional guys, um, when uh, when they've really got something to talk about or something to say, something to do, versus just like I have to keep this schedule up. I, I suppose like if you're monetized and you're collecting super chats, not saying that's all of them because I know some of them don't make. Uh, a ton on super chats um but uh 
But, um, you know, that's that would be a reason to maintain your show schedule. I think. Or if you're just like me and you just on to draw for people. It's a little bit of a different kind of feel to it at, uh, than the time lapses. So Sorona says, lack of streams is great if it means people are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I suppose just for my part, I, I haven't been on, I haven't been in the chats as much as I, I, I used to. I don't know if that's, you know, for everybody, some people, I suppose. Um, some people may be increased, but for me, I, I know that, you know, a lot of the, the stuff that I started with, um, a lot of those people, they're, they're either very different, very busy, or they've, they're just not around anymore. So. So I guess it kind of makes me like, you know, it's like a, I feel like a little bit of a dinosaur or something from, from, from a bygone age when a lot of the people that I watched that I kind of came up with are sort of gone. Or a shadow of their former selves, you know. Hmm. I don't think I like... There we go. How about the people who aren't streaming and still haven't gotten their books out? Oh, yeah, I know there are there are a few. Um, I'm waiting on a couple, um, but for the most part, for the most part, I've said this before. I'm I'm pretty darn lucky. I don't know. You what are you waiting on, Praetor Seven? Anything? Or should I say more to the point? What are you uh, excited about that you're getting besides the course Cerberus? Which uh, which came today? Because um, I, I, you know, Keybird and Throttle was pretty darn good. I'm kind of I'm I'm looking forward to seeing what the uh, versus the Moon Men. No, the Moon Men was the first one versus the Ape Men. Happens. He just uh, put out a tweet. Josh Howard said that uh, he's getting getting along on it. He's making his way, which is awesome. Aaron's been been providing some steady updates. Um, Moving along there. Citizen Rona says, love this sketch set. Birdie Love needs a SIG. Okay, we can, we can do, do a SIG. Uh, let's see here. Let me put that in there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's see. Praetor7 says, I'm only waiting on two, but I know there are more out there. I'm eagerly waiting for Black Flag and Rock and Roll Ninja. At least we know r, &R is uh, uh, done as hard. Oh, that's right. That's, uh, gosh, that's Zach, isn't it? Um, I don't believe I grabbed that one. I, I only, I, I think the only Zach one I grabbed was uh, the Ballad of No, because I really like the uh, 
really like the art. I mean, you know, y'all know I'm like Casey, uh, Kelsey stuff. So let's just layer lock that, make it red, and then we will bring this down to almost nothing. Great. There we go. Praetor7 says, the only other Zach product I own is $4.99. I actually enjoyed the story. The colors, not so much. Yeah, it, so it, I've heard it's almost become legend at this point. Um, was that Zach did the colors for the book? Or did he have Narwhal do it? Or did Narwhal... Because I heard Narwhal had a, a... It was done. And he changed the... He had different colors, like the ones that were in the in the thing. And then Zach told him to change it. So that it was... Uh, it was uh, like neon or something like that. I feel like these streams are almost becoming like... You guys kind of keeping me up on what's going on or what has gone on. Cause I've heard that was uh was like a a universal misstep, I guess we'll say it. But Okay, Praetor7 says, I'm not sure who did the colors. I thought the story is Zach. I had them changed at the last minute. I'm not sure if the book was already done with the colors. But no, from what I understand, uh, I think Zach saw some sort of a, I don't know if it was like a independent comic book or something like that, some with some crazy colors. And he got super excited about it because, I mean, you know, like, you see something really different and new and it gets you... It gets you really excited. Um, <laughs> uh, I have this worry that Zach's going to decide to color R and R Ninja. There. You know, I feel like that looked almost like it was like, and maybe that was his intent, sort of like a Metal Gear kind of thing. So maybe he'll just kind of take some inspiration from the Kojima art. Um, I guess we'll find out. Yeah. He hasn't he hasn't really put much out that piques my interest. Um say that. Zach seems to have low impulse control. Hello, Marcus Killiger, welcome to the nest. Um Yeah, I'm I'm finding like it, it's it's a weird feeling uh, right now in crowdfunding uh, because it's it's one of those things where I'm looking for sp something specific, but I don't know what it is yet, uh, and I'll know when I when I get it. Um, I'll know when I back it, or, or rather when I receive it and, and you know read it and stuff like that. But but uh, I'm I'm looking for something different. Um, that will like, like scratch a certain itch, but I'm not even a hundred percent sure of what that is. I know that it's not really, you know, like dependent on superheroes or whatever that you'd say. Uh, it's, it's not super adult. It's not so much a kid's book or anything like that, but I mean, there's just, there's something out there type of book that I'm really waiting for and I'm in the mood for, but I am not even, I am a hundred percent sure what it is. I just know I want something, something different that, you know, you don't really see much. Um, and I'll know it when I see it, but 
maybe something that's not super reminiscent. I mean, you know, of course it can it can be a little reminiscent, but doesn't borrow heavily from other things. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's it's kind of just like I, I'm looking for that kind of you know next thing to um, really inspire me to really like kick kick things off harder. But but uh, I haven't really. I don't know that I've seen it yet. So, you know, the quest continues. I don't know. What do you guys think of just drawing on stream versus... Uh, just watching a time lapse. You no, know, it's not got me not talking as much, which I mean can be a blessing. Depending on who you ask. about that and maybe if I just you know, let's okay These streams are really good for uh, when I don't have any, you know, like anything crazy to share. Especially when either there hasn't been going a lot of stuff going on online or the stuff going on online is stuff that nobody really wants to talk about. Whether it being because we're, we're you know, most of us are just tired of the fighting or, or it's just not a huge deal that anybody cares about and i'm seeing people are starting to uh push back on it a little bit um marcus says there's a lot of books right now that are inspired by image in cg oh yeah absolutely you got like um well john's stuff obviously i mean he did he did some image i believe he got um, um joe sontag his stuff Pretty image inspired, and uh, let's say Type Zero looks a little bit image inspired, and and uh, every ear has got their fans. Much some uh, fun as some of that stuff can be, I I'm looking for something a little different. This is Ryan uh, Citizen Rumor says I like watching the process as long as it's not real slow, like say Ethan, the artist in me kicks in and drives me nuts. Not an image guy, Marcus Kilger says. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I I I've got some fond memories with image. Um, more so like when my my dad bought these um they were these uh these blind bag kind of things like you know you get a you get a, a blind box for 25 bucks from this uh, bookstore there was always a lot of image in there and you know for a little kid it was it was something special just to have those comics michael dici uh i like real time draw streams as long as the artist enjoys it it's comfortable with a little talking time lapse is fine as a quick tutorial about how an artist works just a different hand. it really is it really is and i you know I'll, I'll still do some some of those slow down time lapse things but um every once in a while you know it's it's fun to try that challenge of 
drawing this stuff in, in front of people just to see you know if i'm if i'm progressing that you know that pressure of <laughs> of doing this marcus uh says i was finishing and out of college when the image guys came up yeah yeah i was not <laughs> bristolian dave welcome to the nest always good to see you yeah in uh, what was it 92 when image started i would have been in first grade kindergarten first grade second grade somewhere around there tough to think um but uh, i didn't really read it until of course you know a few years later maybe maybe five ten years later when it was just like you know they were they were uh super cheap super overprinted i mean uh, or, of course that was like you know within a year but but um Let me just like that. Ah. Uh, and that's why Marcus leads towards professionals because, well, they don't do as much of that. However, they do have, they got Dan, they got Art, Art did some image stuff, I believe. Um, I don't know if Andy did. I don't think he did. Um, but, uh, you got a couple of those guys that did some image stuff or maybe art was working on X-Men primarily when, I don't know. He, he was at, I think he was on the image documentary when they were doing that. So he, he had to have been doing some of it. Uh, what year did the image guys start? Well, a lot of the, the image guys at Bristolian Days asked. A lot of the image guys, they were working at Marvel in the late 80s. Um, but then I think they, the company formed around 92, I want to say. Yeah, Art was a big time anchor for those guys. And I know he did a lot for, I suppose he did go over there for, because uh, during, he was, uh, he did a lot of X-Men, I think, for... Was it Wallace Partacio? Partacio? For, um, in that run, I, I want to say that he was he was on those on those inks in that run, and then of course Partacio went over to Image Two. Wow! Look at you, Dave. Ninety-two. That was when he was born. <laughs> so you you are as old as Image. How about that? So Dave would have been been ten years old when you were getting like, oh, you were getting like Adam Kubert X Men, and maybe a little George Perez Avengers, maybe. Uh, trying to think of what was going on in two thousands uh, in uh, DC around the two thousands. That would have been. Um, Uh, Marcus Killigrew says it was uh, not the drawing ability. It was the lack of storytelling. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that's really when you, you started to see like the, the pinups that were pages really kicked into overdrive. Oh. Leave that. Every, you know, the character like, like just flexing every single... Uh, muscle when they were talking talking about the plan you know we're gonna go in there we're gonna get everybody and stuff and then they they just they flexed all their muscles and gritted their teeth because it looked cool that's interesting to see when like uh joe sontag and and uh sean arndt and kayla sit and talk about 
like the art because then they got they got some real love for that stuff um interesting to see what they say about it i almost wonder it'd be interesting to see what newer people to comics that have never actually read a lot of them that are getting into them now taking them back through through um the years like even from from the 30s 40s going forward to image and now seeing what they think of some of these uh, comic artists and styles and things like that and which ones would be the best that would be an interesting show wouldn't it like you get a panel of uh newer people maybe a, maybe one or two older fans and you just kind of go through like uh maybe specific art from a decade at a time um, Michael St. Joseph says, as an outsider looking in Western comics often feel like glorified art books. Sometimes, oh yeah, sometimes they, they absolutely are. Um, and when the art is great, that can be, that can be a wonderful thing, but often it's, it's, I think what happens is artists get complacent or they get, they get comfortable with doing certain things and they don't really branch out and they kind of just stick to the same poses and you know it's, it's like when you when you sketch something uh somebody sketches something a lot of times they just have the character standing around they, they just have them standing there and it's an easy thing to do not doing an action shot just having having just like a standing position uh something that you might do for costume design but uh but this is just like check out my sweet sketch they're showing off their their anatomy skills i think but when you have have them rotate the character have them like flying punching whatever like that it becomes instantly much harder and as a result you know that's how you get a lot of those books with talking heads because we sp we tend to spend a lot of time on the face and and uh it's the easiest thing for a lot of people it's hard but it's still the easiest thing so you get a lot of comics that are like just basically made up of faces Uh, okay, let's see. Ooh, I can't believe it. I'm actually having to catch up with the chat. So first, um, Citizen Rona says, for me, it was the art. Uh, I just never liked the style at the time. Right, I suppose. Um, Praetor7 says, there seems to be a big push for artists to write their own stories. I'm not a huge fan of this push. Some artists need writers. It's true. You know, I'm, a, I'm actually a big fan of it because... Um, I mean, and you're right. Sometimes uh, an artist isn't a very good writer and they either need to get somebody else or overcome that. Uh, I like to see what what a single person's vision of something is or could be. Sometimes you get people that are you know, great writers, not great artists, vice versa. Some, and you can find little... Uh, you can find little... Um, what would you call it? Shortcuts around there. You know, like, like uh, if you're not great at writing... Um, you know, find a way to sparse it up a little bit, draw the things you want and, and, and really be economical with your, your word choices and stuff. Make it like a, a puncture, a point instead of just writing over and over big, huge, complicated plots and stuff like that, simplify it and, you know, maybe decompress it a little bit for th those type of people, make it count when you do it. Um, but I do like to see a singular vision. I like to see what one person can come up with. That's that's for a lot of magic. But collaboration, obviously, we wouldn't have some of the best stories in comics have been through that. So there's certainly something to be said. Bristolian Dave says uh, there is such a small amount of creatives who are just as good at writing as they are drawing. There's a reason they're two separate roles. Editors too, they are solely sorely needed in indie comics. Boy, you ain't never lies, and as Vanessa would say, um, Citizen Rona. Uh, talking to Praetor 7. Citizen Rona says, I get the feeling when an artist does a story, the art comes first and then the story uh, should always come first and then the art feels this, uh, feeds this, art feeds the story, right? Uh, he's talking to Bristol Day. Praetor, uh, Praetor 7 says, yeah, art is incredibly important in comics, but I'm tired of reading terribly written books. Mm. Yeah. Um, gosh, you know, well, how I do it is what I'll do is I'll... Uh, I will take a, I usually like to draw on like that cardstock, that 110 pound cardstock when I'm figuring things out and I will, uh, divide it in half. I'll draw what I think I need. I'll have a, I'll have a loose idea of the story in my head. I'll draw what I think I need for the, 
a page and I usually plot like three to five pages at a time. So then you, uh, you block out where your words are going to be and you write down your first impression of what your words are going to be. Right. And then as you're drawing, as you're coming through those facial expressions, pushing stuff around the page, that's when you edit your, your dialogue and stuff like that. When you uh, decide what should be said, what shouldn't be said. And I'm actually also a big fan of casting a voice to whatever character you're working on. It doesn't necessarily have to be patterned after that, but if you have, like, say, you know, you go like, okay, uh, I'm going to take this character and I'm going to call it, this is going to be Gene Hackman. And this, this guy right here, that's going to be Gary Oldman from The Professional, you know, that sort of thing. So when you're running your lines through your head, how they're going to say you need to listen to like how a Gene Hackman in, in, uh, I don't know the French connection. How would he say this line? Cause you could have like, you could have the word. Yes. Eight, nine, 10 different ways, depending on who's saying it, you know? Yeah, sure. I got it. I got it. You know, you know, something like that. Like, um, depending on the actor that's saying it, you know, whoever you're, you're kind of, and it doesn't necessarily mean that that person has to be the actor. Um, but, uh, but it does help with dialogue. I think to, to put it into, into specific set of line or you know, like cadence of line. Um, says Rona says, I also like to see more covers that tell me what, uh, the story is actually about. I always love the books that had scenes from what was happening in the pages. Too many pinups. Yeah, I suppose what was that? Must have been around 2000s. That that really became became a thing where uh, let's see here, where you really just got, or maybe that's that was also no, they did some story kind of covers and image, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, I. I, I Typically, if I if I'm doing a book or something like that, the uh, the story is the last thing that I do because I like to have you know sort of a uh, indication of what's in the story too when I do my stuff, and that partially is what these uh, these practice posters and stuff that I do. That's that's getting yourself used to composition. It's getting you used to. Uh, deciding what's important to the reader is you know will get their attention if it fails it fails if it's just a, a basic project uh bristolian dave says and variant covers so many variant covers the mainstream is criticized for it but it's cool when indie creators do it uh, five or six covers nah i suppose i would that's a tough one because i mean like I feel like in the mainstream, variant covers became a way to kind of keep artists on the leash. You know, you, you give them give them a variant cover, you give them a little extra money. Obviously, a single image cover is going to cost more than like a page. Sort of a way of retaining artists and, you know, getting them paid, giving them something to do. Um, but... Uh, but the indie comics, I mean, I suppose it's like, it's for collectors, it's for, uh, you know, I don't know, actually. Like, I, I personally, whenever there's a, a situation where I have a chance to buy multiple covers, I really just pick the one that I like the most. And more often than not, it's going to be the artist that worked on the book. That's kind of... I try to get the artist that worked on the book, unless that op option isn't actually available, because sometimes uh, it isn't. Then I'll just pick the one that I like the most. Uh, but I usually only go with one. The only exception being when uh, Charlie sent me, sent me, you know, like all of the covers for the Charlie's London book, because I worked in it. So that was that was kind of nice. And then seeing she's going to like basically double the size of her book. So 
So, and I contributed 10 pages to that. So I'm, I'm done, finished. Don't have to worry about that any longer. Good to have it off the, off the agenda. Hope you all like it. Hope you like the last one. Dave says, uh, variant covers in the mainstream are all about capturing sales from a uh, speculator and collective market. One in 25, one in 50. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think, I, I feel like from a, you know, like a, a, uh, editorial type standpoint, it's, it's a situation I think where there's just not enough work to go around and they can't afford some of this talent anymore. You know, like they're not going to ask these legends to take, you know, 150 a page because those legends like they get way more than that for just doing a, a sketch. So, you know, you want them there to draw numbers with the cover, but not to have to pay them what they're worth as far as page rates go. And you know what, to be honest, like some, some legends, mind you, they, uh, they get to a certain age and variant covers is, is all they want to do. Look at J. Scott Campbell. I doubt that that guy would really want to do, want to do a, uh, full book when he can get, you know, like a ton of money for a variant cover. And maybe if they paid the experienced guys money, they might have. Absolutely. The only problem is like this industry has shrunk so much. Like I feel like you have a hard time returning your investment, uh, especially with, you know, I, I take that back. If, if the uh, industry was still the industry, it was owned, you know, you did work, you did work because you were publishing it, not for a giant conglomerate. It would be different. But seeing as how they got so many different uh, chefs in the kitchen now, you know, it's it just doesn't make any money. Which breaks my heart to see what this, you know, this industry has become just kind of an afterthought for movies and I was talking to somebody the other day. Let me get this first. Citizen Rona says it doesn't seem to be as bad now as in crowdfunding, but there was a time when you see great art on the cover and then the inside art was crap. Or maybe that, I don't know if I ever saw that. Usually they would, they would kind of try to pimp the, uh, the guy drawing the book. But if that's the case, that, I've seen that more more often than not with uh, Dark Horse. Dark Horse is always a crazy offender where you get this really great cover, sometimes painted, and you open up the book, and it's it's kind of well, it's very very different. And the writing on Dark Horse, I always thought was a little hit and miss too. Um, There we go. Yeah, I got to pull out this the uh, the nutty professor can watch that one. I'm not talking about the Eddie Murphy one. I'm talking about the old Jerry Lewis one. <laughs> Those teeth are fantastic. Thanks. Um, I saw that that movie a long, long time ago. I got it on DVD with the the uh, professor there. I, you know, basically like that Simpsons character too, right? When he's doing a Jerry Lee, uh, Lewis impression, not a Jerry Lee Lewis impression. That'd be a lot different. Uh, Bruce, the only thing is, is I've seen that a lot in indie comics. They get oh yeah, we already went through that. Teeth are fantastic. Thank you. There we go. Let me just. <laughs> I 
That always happened. Dazzler used to have great covers and not so great insides. Yeah, you know, Dazzler was like a would you say like a B a B book? I mean, I know she was popular and everything, but it wasn't where you put your star A A game talent. All right, what we got here. I'm doing this in like the worst colorist way possible. I'm sure any colorists that have seen the way I do probably are like laughing their butts off right now, but it's just coloring. You should just practice sketches anyway. So this is practice sketch speed. All right. There we go. Now Dave's got it. Nutty Professor. Yeah. This. No, I, I was just thinking about this today. How much, I'm not 100% sure. I, I'm trusting art critics at times. Not all of them, mind you, but I mean, like, I've seen times where you've had a um, perfectly serviceable piece of art by a really crappy person. Or at least a person that doesn't get along with whoever. And the art is like super attacked. It's like, this is the worst crap. Look at this. And it's clearly better than, you know, anything I could do. Um, if I'm being fair and reasonable. But then, you know, you, you get something that I do that's not as liked by somebody. Or not as well done by, by people that like me. And they're so friggin' kind. But, I don't know, objectively, I've got a long way to go. Marcus Killigrew says variance in crowdfunding is a way for the creator to create more interest in money. Yeah, I suppose that the uh, second chance campaigns and whatnot like that get them. Now, let me ask you this, you guys here in the chat. If you have a book and it's made, let's just say $2,000, $4,000, whatever. And then you do a second chance campaign before it it uh, releases, would you count that toward the total of the entire book or would you just count that for the campaign? Saying like this book made, you know, $15,000 when the first run went like 5,000 or something and the second run went, you know, another 10. You struck it rich or got lucky. Would you count that toward the success of the book or would you just say it's like maybe a variant campaign the second cover was better? I'm on the fence. I feel like it would just be like the book because you know how many how many times some of these books have been re-released and what do I want to do here? All right. Um, what is what is the uh, it's going to be orange or Yellow. No. Let's go orange. Count them together. It's the same. Got to fluff those numbers, Michael. Says. All right. Let's try. Let's try orange. No. You know what? I like. I think I like green better. I think you can have too much, uh, too many choices for covers, though. Uh, Marcus Kilgrew says, and I, I think you're right. It becomes like a this weird phenomenon where, where you know, you're spoiled for choice. Where you you've, you probably had this where you're watching like some streaming or something like that, and 
you don't know what to watch. You end up just menu surfing because there's so dang many options where if you just had like a choice between like three movies, you could certainly decide, eh, hey, you know what? I'm not in the mood for the other, these other two, but I could certainly watch this one. Let's get out some paintbrush. Get watercolor brush. There we go. I, I am using a uh, a pen display. A uh, let me here. I, I can show you one second here. What I've got. So you know you've got two different types of uh, of. It's yeah, he's using his beak to draw. That's right, Dave. He's got a textured glass. It's it's about uh, what twelve inch display kind of thing hooks up right to your computer so it, it works actually as a second monitor um you know as you can see kind of down here it uh it's comfortable for me it's it, it's it's really cheap too as far as these things go it's about 300 bucks so that's uh typically what i use you know but uh yeah that's yeah, fancy All right. Give a painterly look to it. Huh. Oh, notification. There we go. Well, let's see where we at. 55 minutes. We're almost at this hour. How about that? Hey, lady. Citizen Ronan says. I don't know if he was much like that in this movie, but I uh, still uh, like it. Very much. So. Yeah, I um. This was, I, I want to say, this was actually the very first um, straight, like, 
Jerry Lee Lewis, or Jerry Lee, why do I keep saying that? Jerry Lewis movie that I, uh, that I ever saw just, you know, from his library where it was just him. All right, we got to do something about this coat. It looks like threads insinuating rate limits, instituting rate limits. What does that mean? Like, what's what's going on over at, at the uh, at that laughable place? Threads. It's not what what Twitter just did. Hey, hey, Jbot. Welcome to the nest. Glad to see it. Just just having a draw stream. Having one of those. Uh, in one of those parody posters. I came to the conclusion, and I don't know what this is going to do for my sub count, I suppose, since I'm not a crazy, like, YouTube's not a huge priority for me. Like, I suppose that's not going to matter. Um, but I, you know, I came to the conclusion that trying to keep up with talking about comic you know news and stuff like that when so many other people do it better it's not really me you know it's so i'm gonna draw drawing is what i do drawing is what people like i'll talk to the people that that show up just uh converse with them if they want to talk about some of the stuff that's been going on that's totally fine with me we can talk a little bit about it even though sometimes i might not be the uh the best person to talk to about it because I don't have the time to know what's going on. I suppose what we need is we need some like highlights in here, don't we? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think that just the art appreciation field could use a, a boost anyways. Um, I gotta, I gotta do more of that kind of thing. That's the talk and the gossip and stuff like this. I mean, you know, just, we all know there's, I mean, there's a, there's a, uh, difference between just straight up gossip and, and discussing something, but, um, Rarely is there, are there any real things to talk about that aren't just like, you know, hey, did you see what this artist did? Oh man, did you see that? It's, it, and you, you know, you do get sucked into that kind of thing. You can, and then you, you, the next week you find out that most of it didn't amount to anything. <laughs> and you just kind of wasted a bunch of time wondering what's going on or, so I, I, I'm an artist. I draw, that's what I do. The people that typically show up, they like to see art and have a chat about, you know, like art or movies or, you know, things like that. So I feel, I feel like that's the direction. I've got, fortunately, it's also the easiest direction to go in. But um, it's also kind of more under the radar, I suppose. That's my brand. There you go. Real subtle. This Ron thinks Threads was dead before it got started. Well, I'm not going on there. I've got no reason to go. You know what? Maybe he could use a... Uh... Yeah, like a black shirt. Will help a little bit with the contrast. Yeah. 
There. Not bad. All right, so Citizen Ronis says the drawing turned out great. Thank you very much. Very much. Not bad for just like pulling it out of a random orifice, I suppose. Not bad at all. I didn't have a plan coming into this stream. Uh, JBot says I draw, I have a drawing show every Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern. We just hang out and draw, maybe promote ourselves in projects uh, that we think are cool. You're more than welcome to join if you like. 10 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. on Wednesday. That, that is um, sometimes a little bit late for me because I got to get up early and work. But if you do me a favor, Jbot, put your channel name, even just that, you know, what, what to search in my chat here. I will, I will go have a look. And if I'm not already subscribed, I don't know that I am. If I'm not subscribed, I'll go have a look and subscribe and uh, take a look at those shows when I can. How about that? I'd like to see what you guys are, are drawing and doing. Sounds like fun. All right, so. What should we do here? I think I think that's probably, I'll leave that, that mat like that. I like this. Okay, let me just... Uh, Just open up a quick new J Bot art. J Bot art. There it is. Okay. Subscribed. Perfect. Well, I think we've hit our. Uh, our hour here unless you guys got any final words anything to say probably jbot says we celebrated chad townsend's black phantom launch by uh drawing kid squid that book looks pretty darn good i gotta say i know he's uh, i've heard he's an animator he's done some animating stuff and it really shows i i i'll tell you what if you want i've said this before but i think if you want to really get fast and good at comics Study animation. You don't have to learn to animate. You don't have to learn to animate at all. But, uh, you know, speed, precision, um, and uh, consistency. Those are the things that animators have to have. And not to mention how to block a scene, how to, uh, uh, you know, arrange a scene so that it all makes sense. Just that, that composition. Uh, they, they've got to be trained in that kind of thing. So, I mean, it all absolutely applies to... Uh, to comics that's 100 percent best advice i could give you want to learn comics really good comics get into animation get into the finer points of uh you know those con you know constructing so that you can change things from every single angle marks killiger says kirby worked in animation before comics yeah he advertising uh animation stuff like that absolutely that's that's where I've been for about a more well, a year, two years. I bought like, what do I got here? I got uh, Richard Williams, the Animator's Survival Kit, the expanded edition, uh, drawn to life, the two different Disney um, textbooks on how to how to draw. Uh, I've got the three Will Eisner books. Those are really helpful for actually like applying the kind of stuff to comics. Um, sketching for animation. I think that's a book I've got. Like I've got a bunch. Oh, those also. I, it's not necessarily animation, but the uh, framed perspective volumes one and two and uh, frame pers or, uh, framed ink one and two. Great books. Great books for kind of pointing you in the right direction. But anyways, uh, I'm going to pop this dance pop, if that's what they call it, off and let you guys get on with your day. Oh, I said... Uh, Oh, Marcus Killeroo studied studied with Eisner. Interesting. I love his ink ink style. I've got, I think I got a couple of spirit. I just got his uh, artist artisan edition spirit. 
got the best of spirit. And then I've got, of course, his, uh, his uh, contract with God trilogy. Interesting inking in there. Very, very interesting. Uh, Citizen Rona says, I have a couple of Chuck Jones books and some WB and Disney as well. Nice. Yeah. I got to look into some WB type stuff. But, um, but yeah. Get on that animation. It'll help you grow by leaps and bounds. Uh, so you guys have a great day. Thanks for showing up. Um, see you when I see you next. Mm -hmm.